U.S. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi's visit to Taiwan on August 3rd is seen as the ultimate test for the Chinese Communist Party, or CCP. It failed completely. What the CCP feared most happened, that is, losing face. This includes in front of the world and in front of the Chinese public, especially the so-called patriots who are actually brainwashed party lovers. This is the saddest day for China's little pinks, or pinks, names given to the young and old, hypersensitive, hypernationalist digital warriors of China. Stop watching, turn off the phone and go to sleep. Damn it, she's off the plane. Damn it, she's off the plane. The diplomatic failure has also made the Communist Party leader, Xi Jinping, even more defensive. At the Beidaiha summit that is now underway, Xi is likely to come under heavy criticism from his opponents within the party. So why has Beijing engaged in a series of foolish acts? What are the consequences for Taiwan after Pelosi's departure? In this episode, we explore these issues. First, let's review the perfect failure of the CCP. Pelosi's visit to Taiwan was the second by a Speaker of the U.S. House of Representatives in 25 years. Following the April 1997 visit by then Speaker of the House Newt Gingrich, and the second visit by Pelosi to Taiwan, the first occurring 22 years ago. She concluded her 19-hour visit on the afternoon of August 3rd and headed to her next stop, South Korea. On the morning of August 3rd, Pelosi met with Taiwan President Tsai Ing-wen behind closed doors for about an hour after receiving her medal at the presidential palace. Later, President Tsai Ing-wen and Pelosi held an interactive media session in the auditorium of the presidential palace. And Taiwan has been an island of resilience in the world. Indeed, the people of Taiwan have proven to the world that with hope, courage, and determination, it is possible to build a peaceful and prosperous future, even in terms of the challenges you face. And now, more than ever, America's solidarity with Taiwan is crucial, and that is the message we are bringing here today. I'm honored to give the floor. We're grateful for the delegation's visit under such challenging circumstances as a demonstration of unwavering support to the people of Taiwan. The speaker's presence here in Taiwan serves to boost public confidence in the strength of our democracy as a foundation to our partnership with the United States. I told Speaker Pelosi that we are committed to maintaining the status quo across the street. It's really clear that while China has stood in the way of Taiwan participating and going to certain meetings, that they understand that they will not stand in the way of people coming to Taiwan. It's a show of friendship, of support, but also a source of learning about how we can work together better in collaboration. Pelosi also met with pro-democracy activists and human rights workers at the Human Rights Museum. These included a Hong Kong bookseller who fled to Taiwan in 2019, a Taiwanese rights activist and a dissident from Tiananmen Square in 1989. Pelosi was one of three American politicians who unfurled a banner in Beijing more than three decades ago to commemorate the victims of the 1989 Tiananmen Square crackdown. Members of the House of Representatives following Pelosi's visit to Taiwan include Gregory Meeks, Chairman of the House Foreign Affairs Committee, and others. On the night of August 3rd, Pelosi took a special plane to the Osan Air Base of the U.S. military stationed in South Korea to start her visit. This is the first visit by a U.S. House Speaker in 20 years. Admiral Haley Sims, a spokesman for the U.S. Navy's 7th Fleet, said in an email that the Navy's USS Ronald Reagan Carrier Strike Group was in the Philippine Sea when Pelosi landed in Taiwan, accompanied by the guided missile cruiser Aegis Destroyer and the Arleigh Burke-class destroyer USS Higgins. 
the military conflict that the outside world was most worried about didn't happen. Before Pelosi landed, China's national TV, CCTV, said that the Su-35 fighter jets quickly crossed the Taiwan Strait. However, Taiwan's Ministry of National Defense confirmed this to be false news on the evening of August 2nd. During this time, there is a lot of misinformation regarding Communist China's Su-35 fighter jets crossing the Taiwan Strait and other false information. I have to state very clearly, Communist China continues to attack us with misinformation or cognitive warfare. We urge our fellow countrymen to have a clear image of Communist China and not to believe any of the false information fluctuating on the Internet. Previously, multiple CCP departments issued high-profile threats against Pelosi's visit to Taiwan. China's foreign and defense ministries have repeatedly said that they will stand by seriously and will not sit idly by. As we, we can see, uh, such a visit is apparently very much dangerous, very much provocative. If the U.S. insists on, the, uh, 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 on making the visit, China will take firm and strong measures to safeguard our national sovereignty and the territorial integrity. We would like to warn the U.S. again that China is fully prepared for any circumstance. The Chinese People's Liberation Army will not sit back. China will surely make resolute response and take strong countermeasures to safeguard its sovereignty and territorial integrity. What the U.S. should do is abide by the One China Principle and the Three Sino-U.S. joint communiques, follow through on President Biden's commitment of not supporting Taiwan's secessionist attempts, and not to arrange any Taiwan visit by Speaker Pelosi. But so far, Xi Jinping has tried to avoid a military conflict with the United States over Taiwan. This is extremely disappointing to the CCP's pinks. Our country had announced before that once the military aircraft or warships enter Taiwan, then it would be the time to take Taiwan by force. This was announced by the military in the past, but they didn't do it. And we were very disappointed. A country that has 1.4 billion people shouldn't break its promise. We definitely have the power to fight. I don't think she should have come. This creates a lot of ambiguity because Taiwan is a Chinese territory. In terms of international relations or other aspects, it will affect public opinion. I think her arrival to Taiwan will cause a lot of reactions at a different level. Chinese netizens were busy discussing the topic. From Tuesday night to Wednesday, the top 10 most popular topics on Weibo were all related to this topic. Weibo crashed for a while. However, users in mainland China could still access it normally using the overseas IP after bypassing China's firewall. Thus, it's suspected that the Weibo platform restricted normal usage during this period, including login and comments. When Pelosi arrived at Taipei Songshan Airport in Taiwan on the evening of August 2nd, these Chinese netizens who were burned by patriotic emotions looked disappointed and even burst into tears which to some extent showed that the CCP's propaganda is terrible. These patriots or party lovers wrote, I can't believe they actually dared to land. What's the point of just protesting? Never would have thought that it started with such a high tone and ended up with us, the entire nation, receiving the old lady. The red line of the CCP, the government, has been drawn again and again, and it has retreated again and again. Today, it has receded into a red carpet to welcome the arrival of Pelosi. While we protested and cursed, we wiped off the red line and have redrawn the bottom line. Hu Shijin, former editor-in-chief of Global Times, the official media outlet of the Chinese Communist Party, previously shouted in a Weibo post, Give up any other illusions and prepare to use military retaliation, the only language the U.S. and Taiwan can understand. He even claimed that the PLA could shoot down Pelosi's plane, among other things. After the Speaker of the House of Representatives landed in Taiwan, 
whose rhetoric changed. But as always, he tried to inspire netizens, writing, Do you know how scared Taiwan is? Each area of such a formation is a drill on its own, but collectively, are they still general drills? They are an integrated exercise for the unification of Taiwan. This time, many netizens no longer believed him. They responded, You spoke the harshest words and got slapped the loudest. It's a failure of the policy towards Taiwan over the past 40 years. Stop bluffing. This time, the tone is high, the ending is disappointing, and our intentional credibility will be greatly diminished in the future. It will be more detrimental to our diplomacy. In a nutshell, some Chinese netizens who have long believed in the strength and leadership of the CCP have finally figured out who the paper tiger is in this case. Little do the pinks who live in the CCP's illusory propaganda know that party leader Xi Jinping needs stability now before the 20th Party Congress in the fall, a third term as chairman that will be a record breaker. With Pelosi's visit to Taiwan coinciding with the Communist Party's top brass's collective absence from August 1st to 3rd, some observers believe that the ever-intense Beidaihe summit may be happening, and it is likely that Xi Jinping is suffering intense criticism for this diplomatic failure. So what we see now is Beijing can only respond by bluffing. On August 3rd, the Chinese military held a multi-service joint exercise in the airspace and waters around Taiwan. The participating arms included the Navy, Air Force, Rocket Force, and Strategic Support Force. The CCP also threatened to hold military exercises, including live fire exercises in six waters around Taiwan from August 4th to the 7th. Taiwan's defense ministry said the Chinese military exercise amounted to an air and sea blockade of Taiwan in violation of United Nations rules. According to Taiwan's central news agency, CNA, Taiwan's Minister of Transportation said that for the air transport section, the Civil Aviation Administration of the Ministry of Transport is coordinating with Japan and the Philippines to replace the route. For the sea transport section, because there is no fixed route, you only need to avoid the training area. International flights are largely unaffected by Chinese military exercises, as aircraft may have to take alternate routes and international flights may have increased flight time. Taiwan also hopes to open up more international routes. The Japanese chief cabinet secretary stated that the blockade will affect Japan's exclusive economic zone, EEZ, and has expressed concerns to the Chinese side. However, it appears that Beijing's military exercises around Taiwan are not very strong deterrents at this time. Beijing has also suspended the import of some Taiwanese products, including the products of more than 100 food factories in Taiwan and citrus fruits and some fish from Taiwan, as well as the export of natural sand to Taiwan. In addition, Beijing said it would discipline allegedly separatist organizations. The CCP will ban mainland Chinese companies from trading and cooperating with Taiwanese companies that donate to so-called separatist organizations. Why then did Beijing set up a high-profile threat in advance of a military attack that would make it impossible for it to step down in the future? When it had no intention of launching one, arguably, this is a misjudgment on Beijing's part. Xi Jinping and his staff perceived the Biden administration as relatively weak and they had always had high hopes for President Biden. Regarding Pelosi's visit to Taiwan, the Chinese Foreign Ministry said in a statement released on August 2nd that the U.S. Congress is an integral part of the U.S. government and that it is the responsibility of the U.S. executive branch to prevent visits by members of the U.S. Congress to Taiwan. After news of Pelosi's visit was initially leaked, President Joe Biden did say that the U.S. military did not think it was a good time to visit Taiwan. The CCP probably believes that Biden and Pelosi belong to the same political party, and that although it is true that the executive branch cannot interfere with the legislative branch in terms of separation of powers, Pelosi would reconsider if Biden himself really expressed strong opposition. This reflects the mentality of the CCP. Officials in the CCP are formally aware of the separation of powers in the United States, but deep down, they do not believe in it. These officials are so embedded in the Chinese red system that they do not believe that the President of the United States cannot prevent such a diplomatic event. 
It also demonstrates a clear lack of basic understanding by the CCP of the common will of the American public at this time. American society is now beginning to wake up to the fact that communist tyranny is the most significant threat to the free and democratic way of life for humanity in the 21st century. Today, the world faces a choice between democracy and autocracy. America's determination to preserve democracy here in Taiwan and around the world remains ironclad. In our view, the positive significance of Pelosi's visit to Taiwan is that it raises the visibility of Taiwan. In addition, the U.S. passed the Taiwan Travel Act, which theoretically allows anyone other than the president and vice president to visit Taiwan. But in practice, it is still very difficult for a person of the speaker's stature to come to Taiwan. If Pelosi is really deterred by the threat of the Chinese Communist Party this time, there will be no more visits to Taiwan by such a senior political figure as Pelosi in the future. So this visit by the Speaker of the House of Representatives actually paves the way for future visits to Taiwan by senior U.S. political figures. During a media interaction after the meeting with Taiwan President Tsai Ing-wen, a Bloomberg reporter pointed out that the Chinese Communist Party imposed economic sanctions on Taiwan as a result of Pelosi's visit, and that there may be other consequences. Will Pelosi promise Taiwan any specific benefits that could balance the losses suffered by Taiwan? Pelosi said that Taiwan is not a member of the Indo-Pacific Economic Framework, or IPEF, so the U.S. looks forward to establishing an additional portfolio of economic and security cooperation, as well as trade agreements with Taiwan, which she hopes will soon materialize. Getting more support from the U.S. on trade is something Taiwan has long hoped for from the U.S. So for Taiwan, this has significance not only in a symbolic sense, but also in a democratic sense and in terms of political alignment. In fact, Taiwan has also gained real economic and trade benefits. Pelosi also said that before her visit to Taiwan, the U.S. just passed the CHIP Act, which will open new doors for Taiwan-U.S. cooperation in the field of semiconductors. And she knows that there are already some very important Taiwanese manufacturers ready to set up factories and investments in the United States. Uh, we talked about the economy. Thank you for bringing up the CHIPS bill. All of these members were instrumental in passing that important legislation, which we think offers great, greater opportunity for U.S.-Taiwan economic cooperation. Pelosi believes that Taiwan's creativity, entrepreneurship, and other brain power and the success of Taiwanese companies are exemplary and that the passage of the CHIP Act will help promote bilateral economic cooperation and it is believed that the results will be seen soon. The Washington Post reported that Pelosi met with TSMC Chairman Day and Liu on Wednesday to discuss the CHIP and Science Act recently passed by the U.S. Congress and its 52 billion U.S. dollars in subsidies for new U.S.-based chip manufacturing plants. The Washington Post noted that this shows how important chips are to the U.S. economy and national security, and how Taiwan is playing a huge role in providing high-end technology to the global economy. TSMC is currently building a 12 billion U.S. dollar fab in Arizona to help boost chip production on U.S. soil. TSMC is considering expanding the project by building more fabs in the same location. TSMC is Taiwan's largest chip maker, producing more than 90% of the world's high-tech chips. The United States also uses TSMC-made chips in military equipment, including F-35 fighter jets and Javelin missiles, as well as supercomputers at U.S. national laboratories, major consumer electronics companies, including Apple, also rely on a variety of semiconductors made by TSMC. Observing this event, we see that under the current catalyst of the Russia-Ukraine war, the confrontation between the bloc of democratic and authoritarian states has taken shape, and in terms of the general environment, it is favorable to Taiwan, which should seize this moment. This year, Russia invaded Ukraine. And then the security of the Taiwan Strait became another focal point for the rest of the world. The moment that democratic Taiwan is invaded will be a major assault on the security of the entire Indo-Pacific region. But those who expect peace should not be overly optimistic. Looking to the future, Taiwan's security situation has not improved. 
Taiwan is slightly better than Israel in terms of area, population, and economic size, while Taiwan faces an adversary, a security situation that is worse than Israel's, but there are still significant gaps between Taiwan and Israel in terms of war experience. The will to fight and mobilization for war. In these respects, Taiwan should be more vigilant. Taiwan has to solve its own security dilemma by its own long-term efforts, and time is already very tight. Because of the long-term infiltration of the CCP, the pro-communist forces in Taiwan should not be ignored either. During Pelosi's visit to Taiwan, some pro-communist forces in Taiwan came out to raise their cards in opposition. The official Chinese media, CCTV News, posted a photo of there is only one China in the world on Weibo on the evening of August 2nd. And a large number of Chinese artists immediately responded by retweeting the post. Many well-known Taiwanese artists also followed suit. In Taiwan, pro-communist media groups are also very powerful. In this atmosphere, many people, including those in Taiwan, do not have a clear understanding of the CCP. I think that China has already announced import-export bans on us after she, Nancy Pelosi, has only been here for a day which also mostly impacts low-income people. On the news, there are already a lot of farmers saying how they have been banned from exporting to China and that they are angry at the government. So far, after her coming to Taiwan, we haven't even seen any tangible advantages. We haven't received any other benefits and so on. The CCP won't give up the option of taking Taiwan by force. For the CCP, Pelosi's visit to Taiwan was a surprise, and we think Beijing has its own timeline, its own roadmap. It is now widely expected that this time frame will be around 2027, but it could be even shorter than that.